Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well PHP tutorial. Today what we're going to take a look at is the array underscore fill underscore keys function in PHP. Now this will fill an array with specified keys. So let's get into the code and take a look at this. I'm going to create a variable called data. This will be assigned the value of the array fill keys function. So let's create that function call. So array underscore fill keys. Like the other videos before I fill this out, I'm going to go and take a look at the documentation. So we can see that it fills an array with the values specifying keys. This is the link to the documentation for more information. This takes two parameters. The first is the keys. It is an array of values that will be used as keys. This is a little warning here. Illegal values for keys will be converted to string. We'll take a look at that later. The second and final parameter is the value. This is the value to use for filling. So this is going to return an array and the array will have the filled keys and the values. So let's go back to our code and play around with this function call. So the first value must be an array. So we could either define an array here and we would do so using the brackets like so. Or if we wanted to, we could create a variable, assign that to an array of keys and supply that as the parameter. We'll do both of those things in this tutorial. So let's create an array here first. Let's do A, B, and C. The second parameter to the array underscore fill underscore keys function call is of course the values that we want to supply. Let's say for instance, we want to supply the value of product. So this is going to create an array that has three elements. These elements will have the key A, B, and C, and their values will all be product. So, as before, we're going to do print and then pre and then print underscore R, passing in the variable of data. Now I've already got my local server set up for PHP. I've got a link in the show notes below to demonstrate how that works. But for now, let's just go to the browser and access this file. And now we can see that we have this array with the three elements that have the index of A, B, and C, and their values are all product. Now I mentioned before that we could supply the array of keys directly to the function call, or we could assign that a variable and pass that in. Let's go and do that now. Let's go back to the code. So instead of passing in this array directly into the array underscore fill keys function call, what we're going to do is have a variable called keys, and we're going to assign that this array. We're then going to pass in this variable as the first argument to this function call. Now this is going to do exactly the same thing as it did before. In my opinion, this is more readable. This is cleaner than just having it on a single line. In the documentation, it mentions that illegal keys will be changed to strings. So let's go and demonstrate what that means. What is an illegal key? An important point to highlight is the way the keys change depending upon the data type that you've supplied. So for example, if the keys were numeric, it would be handled differently if the keys were strings. To explain this a little bit better, let's go and create a demonstration. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this and paste it underneath. We're going to change keys to keys one and keys one here, data to data one and data one there. This means that this code is not going to interfere with the code above. Okay, so we want to talk about integers in the keys. So instead of having A, B, C, we're going to have one, two, and three. Now these are numeric values. These are integers, whole numbers. So let's save the code and go back to the browser and refresh the page. As expected, we have these three elements with the keys of one, two, and three. Now we want to focus on the data type of these keys. 
So let's go back to the code and instead of using print R, we want to use var dump. What I'm going to do is copy this again because I want to use this as reference. We'll change keys one to keys two. And of course, we'll change data one to data two, like so. And instead of running a print R, we're going to do a var dump. Now we want to focus on the data type of the keys. So we want to pull out the keys instead of the full array. So to do that, we would use array underscore keys, like so, passing in data two. Okay, save your work, go back to the browser and refresh the page. The second example here is the print R. The third example here is the var dump focusing on just these keys. And notice that we have integers one, two, and three. But what happens if we change these to be strings instead of integers? So let's go back to the code and demonstrate that. Again, what I'm going to do is just copy this. We'll paste it below. Let's change keys two to keys three. And of course, data two to data three, like so. We want to change these to be strings, strings of numbers. So let's put a single quote around these integers. This means that they are no longer integers, they are strings. Save your work, go back to the browser and refresh the page. Scroll down to the other example. Even though we've changed them to be strings, they are now integers. So that's something that you have to look out for. If you're using numeric values in a string, they will be converted to integers. This also means that if you mix strings and integers that have numeric values within these keys, then you're going to override the values within the array that you're filling out. To demonstrate that, let's go back to the code. Let's copy this again, paste it underneath. Change keys three to keys four, and like so in here. And of course, change data three to data four. What we're going to do is we're going to supply a numeric value of one. So this means that we want a fourth element within this array. But notice the numeric value is one, but this is a integer and this is a string. We're expecting to have four elements within this array. Let's save that, go back to the browser and refresh the page. Scroll down to the last example. You can see that there's only three elements here. You can see that by the, the value three within the parentheses of the array. So we have one, we have two, and we have three. They're still integers, but we were expecting a fourth one. Now we don't have the fourth one because the array fill keys function call changes the keys to integers. And in doing so, it's overriding the first element because it has two keys that have the value of one. To make this a little bit clearer, let's actually provide the element values to these keys. So let's go back to the code. Let's copy this again, paste it underneath. Let's change keys four to keys five, like so. And of course, change data four to data five. In this example, we want to focus on the whole array, not just the array keys. So let's get rid of this function call. And also let's put this back to a print R. Now this value doesn't have to be a string. It could be a mixed value, which means that this itself could be an array. So let's create an array and I would like to have apples and pears as the value. So what we're expecting is four elements, one, one, two, and three, and each element will have a nested array where we have apples and pears as their values. So let's save this and go back to the browser and refresh the page. If we scroll to the bottom, we can see that we have the apples and pears within the arrays that we've created, but notice that we only have the array key of one once within this output. Another example that I would like to demonstrate in this tutorial is what happens if you supply null values in the array keys. So let's go back to the code. We're going to copy this again. 
We'll change keys five to key six. And of course, we'll change data five to data six. And what we're going to do here in this example is we're going to change this to be null. So let's hit save. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to skip over a null value or will it include a null value? What does a null value for an array key look like? Let's go and check that out. Let's refresh the browser. If we scroll to the bottom, we can actually see that we're actually printing out a null value for the key. So this is actually quite interesting in the sense that PHP isn't changing this to an integer. It's not changing this to any kind of value. It's just null. So again, please use caution when you're using dynamic array keys make sure that they actually have values. If you found this tutorial helpful, then please do let me know. Give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the How To Code Well YouTube channel to get more tutorials like this. If you've got any suggestions for other courses, then also do let me know. We have a Discord server, so if you've got any coding questions, then you can access that and ask coding questions there. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers. Bye.